you know, after a while we thought, well, what's the next successor going to be? Uh, well, maybe I can go down to an eight inch. You know, I didn't want to go down lower as a two-way system because you're going to start having issues with um, too much movement to the cone. So we release the eight inch and okay, everything's fine. What do I do next? Well, sort of the obvious thing would be a floor stander. And if I'm going to do a floor stander, do I just put that eight inch drive? And if you're going to do a floor stander, the first thing we want is a relatively sm small one rather than a, you know, if we do the 10 inch floor stander, it could be amazing, but it's got to be huge. So, okay, especially with the European market and Asian market where you know, small speakers are clearly more popular. Then let's just do the eight inch version as a floor stander. So it's, do I just use that single driver in a much bigger enclosure so I can tune it much lower, but then it's gonna move so much to produce that extra low bass that it's not gonna work so well. So I thought, okay, instead, let's add some extra bass drivers. So how many, <laughs> right, and what's the configuration? I thought, if I'm gonna do this, let's just put two eight-inch bass drivers in, and that way we can get um, real power into the, the bass area. And that meant, okay, I'll develop some new bass drivers. I'm not just gonna buy bass drivers off the shelf, you know, I've never done that. So thinking about the configuration of the magnet system I'd use for the concentric driver, I thought, oh, what I'd like to do is an underhung motor structure, you know, short coil in a long gap. Most drivers, and particularly f for cost reasons, are long coil in a short gap. And you know, the theory is, as long as the coil's much longer than the gap, you've got linear movement. Well, you actually haven't because the coil picks up fringing flux. So there's never a linear force region. There's a linear flux region, but there's not a linear force region. You get a curve that flattish topped, but it's always a curve. When you do short coil long gap, as long as the coil is in the gap, both the flux and the force are constant. So I thought, let's do that. It's what I did with TAD. Uh, all my base drivers with TAD were that configuration. But I thought, well, I did this double magnet system. And when you do short coil long gap, it's difficult with a single magnet to get enough flux in the gap. So let's do two magnets, but they need to be oppositely polarized, just like I do with the concentric, which factories don't like to do because you, you pre-magnetize the magnets, then you glue them all together in the structure. And they're either gonna fly apart or go boom like that. And you, you know, so, uh, you have to build all these jigs to assemble it, but that's what we did and now driving it from both ends you get a perfectly linear flux and force through the gap. It also cancels a lot of the flux modulation. So it worked out really nicely. So that's what I did for the base drivers and then it needs to be in a, you know, a good cabinet. So the this operates down to about 130, 150 hertz now. It's in its own separate enclosure inside the speaker so it's kind of there's a vertical brace running here and then a horizontal one there so it divides that off and then each base driver is in its own separated enclosure with its own vent and both you know, equal volumes for each base driver equal port tuning and they just run in parallel they are um, higher impedance running parallel the overall impedance is a bit lower in the base than the source point eight itself that was like a minimum of seven ohms um, but uh, this is a minimum of it's basically a six ohm speaker a minimum of about 4.5 ohms just at a couple of frequencies and the rest of it it's higher than that so it's still relatively easy to drive it's not a killer low impedance like some speakers get to be uh, same exactly the same sensitivity same sound balance throughout the mid and treble but now with the added bass oomph. And <laughs> I must say, <laughs> bass is good, right? Um, getting, it's, it's tuned, <laughs> exactly, bass therapy. Aha, uh -huh, I've got some tracks for you. So um, it's tuned down at 32 hertz. 
so it's minus 6 dB at 32 hertz. And in my room, measuring it, and in here, we got really good, some tracks with 30 hertz in that just sail through. And um, I don't normally quote in-room response because that's a, a variable depending on the room. The, you know, the standard would be an anechoic response so that you're on a level playing field. So it's 6 dB at 32 hertz. But it has a lot of power. So I've been using the Hi-Fi Rose amplifier, which is you know, four channels of amplification. And so you can bridge them in stereo mode to get 400 watts into eight ohms. And I've, <laughs> I've used all of that at times. In fact, at times, the amplifier just turned itself off. <laughs> no, no more. Just give me a rest. <laughs> so um, it's fun doing that kind of thing. And you know, my room, my listening room at my office is uh, 20 foot wide, 30 foot long, and 11 foot ceilings. And this just drives it easily. Because if you think four eight inch bass drivers is equivalent to a 15 inch sub for music. So that's pretty good going. And when it's as linear as these drivers are, it just works really nice. And there's such extensive, because of the way we've had to divide the volumes up, there's two vertical braces, there's three horizontal ones, and so it really does uh, stiffen up the cabinet. You know, the front baffle is inch and a half thick, all the side walls are three quarters of an inch. So it weighs 100 pounds, and uh, it's $5,000 a pair. So it's, it's really good value. That's really great value. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I'm excited to hear them. 